Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co., and this is going to be a somewhat longer news and week in review and all those things segment because we have a lot of things to go through. We have news, lots of news. Like, you know how last week there were like two things of news? Lots and lots of news this week. Uh, we also have, I'm going to be going into a bit the whole shipping cost. I'm going to be responding to a bit of the shipping cost commentary around that video, going into that as the, the full, you know, topic segment of this video, as well as, of course, what I've played and all of that. And then, of course, the we can review the original point of this, this video, covering the videos I've done this past week. But before we get into any of that, this is a slightly new camera angle, which you may or may not have noticed. And the reason for that is I'm testing things out. Effectively, what's going on here is, and this exact camera angle won't stay, but I'm specifically testing out how this, this setup works without my regular coffee table in the shot. Because I'm considering, I'm considering putting that coffee table somewhere else. I'm not entirely sure how this plays out. I'm still going through things in my head, but effectively what's going on is, you remember that table I unboxed last week, uh, the table I put together? I'm debating, I'm debating keeping that table. I can't tell sure this, she'll kill me, but I'm debating keeping that table in the end because I've been playing Assassin's Creed on it all week long and it's been really nice to have a dedicated spot for solo setup stuff. Uh, basically, my my current setup right now and before we get to that table is that I have my gaming table upstairs, which doubles as our dining room table, which means for all its features and functionality, it's not nearly as available as I'd like because we have four children and and of course my wife as well, and they all use the table during the week. So not as available. It still helps, don't get me wrong, but it's not as available as I'd like. Uh, then we have my filming setup over there where it's useful, but I can't set up a game to play solo in my, I can't set up like a campaign game to go through because I need to film. And then we have my coffee table, which I've used in the past, which is pretty decent, but doesn't have, it, it, it can be a little frustrating in terms of utilizing it on a regular ongoing basis for longer games because as people have pointed out in the past, while it's great for short, short sessions, it's not great for being hunched over on a longer, you know, hour and a half long gameplay. Uh, versus having this smaller table, which is just out of the shot over here, or maybe, maybe the edge is in shot. I can't, looks like it's out of shot. I can't tell. Either way, point is I'm reconsidering uh, different aspects of this basement and rearranging them to get rid of the coffee table. Not get rid of, but put it somewhere else. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Any feedback around that is helpful. If you don't care at all, no need to comment. If you're like, no, I love the coffee table, well, let me know. And if you don't really, yeah, I mean, either way, we'll see. I'm, I'm experimenting. The point is, the, the, the current camera angle is a bit weird because I have the camera now on top of the coffee table to get the current, or whatever. I'm trying to experiment without having the coffee table on the shot while it's still underneath the camera. So, a bit tricky there. And with that, with that, let's go ahead and go into a whole bunch of things. Let's start with all the news. Then we're going to go into the topic of the week. Then we will go into the uh, what I've played. And finally, the week in review. So, starting off with news. Lots and lots of news to begin with. And I'm just going to, I'm going to group these into various segments. To begin with, we have raised shipping prices across the board. Uh, different campaigns are handling it differently. We have campaigns handling it in terms of covering the cost themselves. We have, I just saw Rurik put in an update saying, hey, we're covering the cost, but if you want to donate, that'd be really appreciated. Thank you so much. That was great there. Uh, and some campaigns are saying, hey, well, we're delaying, we're playing by ear. And, and one or two campaigns have said we do have to ask for more money. So across the board, interesting. Let's talk about it a bit more when we go into the week in review, uh, the, sorry, the topic of the week, because I want to fully delve into that comment as well as some of the replies I got on my video. I put out a full video on this on this new segment piece. Uh, past that, past that we have uh, Going Analog. Going Analog, a game show, a YouTube quiz show that I have talked about and raved about in the past. They have a podcast, they have a a, a quiz show where they quiz people on board game related stuff and Jeremy Howard was just on that. He did surprisingly well, not surprisingly well, actually I would have, I would have expected Jeremy Howard to do pretty well. I would say in fact the two questions he got, two of the three he got wrong, I would have thought he would have known. But either way, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll throw a link down below. Play along with him. See what you get. He got 17 out of 20. Can you beat Jeremy Howard? I want to know. Uh, past that, that sounded so newsy. That sounded like so newsy. Can you beat Jeremy Howard? See tonight at eight. Meanwhile, is the local food, is the food that you're eating for dinner tonight poisoning your family? Dun, dun, dun. In any case... <laughs> So, uh, moving on from there, we have a few, a uh, few news pieces, a few pieces of, what is it again? Uh, uh game announcements, non-Kickstarter game announcements, or at least, actually, some of them might be Kickstarter, I don't know. Either way, Steamforge Games announced that they have a 5th edition campaign supplement miniature something coming out. I don't know exactly. I didn't overly look into it because I don't really do D&D or role-playing or that kind of thing, but they announced that they have some sort of uh, something coming out with miniatures. So we'll see how that goes. In fact, I'm getting a Steamforge Games update on my phone as we speak, although this one's for Monster Hunter World. Cool. Kickstarter update. Looks like the pledge manager open. 
Either way. Uh, then from there, we have a follow-up to Blitzkrieg. Uh, Blitzkrieg, one of my favorite two-player games that my wife and I have really enjoyed. They have a follow-up coming up called Caesar, which I don't know how different it's going to be than Blitzkrieg. Uh, I, it sounded like it's just going to be like another game, like Ticket to Ride and Ticket to Ride Europe, that kind of thing. It could have gameplay differences. Maybe it does and doesn't. I hope it does, because if it's purely a re-theme, then I don't see the need to own both. Uh, as much as I love Blitzkrieg, I don't need two copies of the same game with a different theme. But I assume there'll be gameplay differences, in which case, yes, please, come on over. Uh, then we have Lucky Duck announcing Chronicles of Crime for kids. It's called something else, Chronicles of of something, but basically they are putting out a Chronicles of Crime game, but for a more family-friendly kid base. I will be getting my hands on that one, because I like Chronicles of Crime. I found the part that I found most frustrating. The reason I got rid of it, initially I really enjoyed it. Chronicles of Crime is a game that I enjoyed my first play a lot. I enjoyed my second play a decent amount, and my third play I was like, I think it's time to move on from this game, because I found that the more I played Chronicles of Crime, the more I spent with my phone just going, chuk, chuk. okay, I moved to that location, chuk, chuk, chuk. Just constantly scanning QR codes, hoping for a lead, hoping for a connection. What's interesting, by the way, is Destiny is a game that I really have enjoyed quite a bit. I have heard people give similar feedback in terms of their negatives, that they have found themselves wandering around with no direction or unable to actually figure out what to do next, and that's frustrating. And I completely understand that. It's a very fascinating conversation because I haven't experienced that in my plays of Destiny so far, but if I did, it absolutely would turn me off. That's what happened for me with Chronicles of Crime. And so... I find that interesting, and it's actually an interesting conversation that uh, Johnny Pack uh, posted something on Facebook recently about the concept of review drift, about the concept of reviews focus on reviewing things right away in a short time frame. You know, it might be it might be five plays of a game in you know the first two weeks, and then you review it, as opposed to experiencing longevity over time, which is a conversation I want to tackle more in depth because I don't disagree with him at all. I think it's a real concept. But I, I will tackle that conversation in a full, in-depth video because I think it's a fascinating conversation to tackle. My overall point there is Chronicles of Crime I got rid of because I didn't like multiple plays of it, but I think that the kids' version of the game will be interesting enough for my children and likely a little easier, which my frustration was the, the just the constant point and clicking. Also, the fact that Destinies, some people had a negative experience with that I certainly have not had yet, but hey, if I do, if I do, you'll find out. We'll talk about that. There will be, I will have the concept of, well, first of all, I have games leaving the collection, and secondly, as I do plan and doing what Tom Vassell does of, you know, last year, last year, uh, talking about the games I reviewed last year and how their rating has held up. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on, we have uh, New Orleans, uh, uh, what's it called? New Orleans coming. Is it New, New Orleans? New Orleans. New Orleans or Orleans. It's called, sorry, my bad. My note says New Orleans, and therefore I said New Orleans. But either way, uh, Orleon, Orleon is come, Orle, Orleon, I can't say it properly, is, uh, basically being reprinted. This is a game from TMG. TMG seems to be having problems. I don't know if they've officially folded or not, but TMG generally seems to be having problems. Capstone Games is picking up, uh, the Orleon game and they are reprinting it. The base version of the game will include the fifth player module. That's, and so it's gonna have, uh, one to, uh, one to five players or two to five players in the base game, I assume. The expansion adds one to f one player. Either way, we will see, but it's being reprinted and we'll find out how that goes and from there from there we go to a few kickstarter announcement dates uh and we're going to divide this into two things general announcements and then all the game found announcements because it is crazy so general announcements general announcements is going to be six siege is going to be launching june 22nd i did not think it was gonna be that soon i thought at earliest it was gonna be june 29th they had like lots of information with no date no date no date and then they're like Next week, guys, get ready, enjoy. But Six Siege, pay attention to that one. Solid game, amazing skirmish game, uh, really, really enjoyed it. Does not capture the FPS feel, a, a little bit it does. It captures the FPS feel, a drop, in the sense that they have a timer, so you have that, you have line of sight in a board game combined with a timer that makes you rush. So it has a drop of FPS feel, but really it's far more about the tactical play. Really solid game, really enjoyed that, looking forward to more plays of that. Uh, Velocity Vanguard, a game that I've been talking about for a long time has officially announced that they are coming back to Kickstarter June 29th. I will have coverage of the game. The prototype is over there, set up on that table. Not this table, because I got Assassin's Creed still set up. Maybe at the end of this video, I'll pivot the camera for you, because because I'm in the middle of I'm in the middle of more Assassin's Creed, and it's intense. In any case, uh, Velocity Vanguard. So Velocity Van Vanguard is coming to Kickstarter June 29th. Stay tuned for that. I've really enjoyed it. It is, it is a very interesting game. 
Stay tuned for my review, probably coming next Saturday, but we'll see. Maybe it'll be later, maybe it'll be earlier, I don't know for sure. Who really knows anything in this oh-so-temporary world of ours? And then finally, July 7th, not finally, finally from what I have in my notes, there's lots of stuff I missed, I'm sure. July 7th, July 7th, we have Soul Raiders coming to Kickstarter. Soul Raiders is a game I talked about a long time ago, and then we didn't hear anything for a while. Uh, it's designed by designed by the guy who did Splendor, whose name I can't remember, but it's a totally different game than Splendor. Like, if you love Splendor, it doesn't matter at all. If you hated Splendor, it doesn't matter at all. It's a totally different game than Splendor, but it's called Soul Raiders, uh, one plus game, well, it's a solo plus game, so it's not, sorry, it's not a solo game. It is a game that has solo, but also has, I believe, competitive. I don't think it's cooperative. I have to double check. I hope to have coverage of that as well, but I haven't played it yet. I hope to be breaking it out this weekend. We shall see. Uh, then, oh, by the way, as usual, games on the table over here, or games on the couch now, because if they're not on the table, they got me on the couch. Games on the couch I will be talking about at the end of this video, as usual. And then from there, we go into the game found updates. Now, first and foremost, if you want a more detailed half an hour long update just around all these games I'm about to talk about now, uh, head on over to, 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 to Leash of Games. Chris from Leash of Games had a full video covering all this. I'll link to it down below. Uh, I'm just going to go very quick high notes onto each of those. Effectively, game found announced that they are, first of all, they are entering their towards the end of their beta phase where they are going to be opening up game found to basically anyone who wants to to join at a certain point uh so they're coming close to that that said even before there we are definitely seeing a wave of game found games coming soon it's coming soon and here are a bunch of them including some i'm particularly excited about so to begin with the big announcement was going to be lords of ragnarok with tens of that ten thousand people already following this on game found game uh awaken realms just teased lords of ragnarok the sequel or spiritual successor or follow-up to Lords of Hellas. Lords of Hellas, a game I've had in my collection for two years. I've talked about how much I wanted to play that a long time ago. I had a video of 10 games I wanted to play, and Lords of Hellas was on that list. I finally tabled it like a week and a half ago for the first time, and I'm so happy I did because, because I mean, don't get me wrong, had I seen the Lords of Ragnarok announcement, I would have been, let's play Lords of Hellas next week. But but either way, Lords of Hellas is excellent. We'll talk about it more later this video. Uh, then from there, we have uh, Masters of the Universe from Arkham Games. There's going to be basically two Masters of the Universe games. There's going to be one from Kaman, one from Arkan. I believe the Arkan game fan run, I believe if you're in the U.S., you will not be able to pledge. I believe. I have to double-check, or you have to provide a non-U.S. address. I don't think they're shipping to the U.S. It's all about licensing rights. The Ma the Kaman one will be shipping to the U.S. and not these other areas. So you have two games that are different, but both with the same theme, catering to different uh, locales, basically. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be interesting. If you have a friend in Europe right now, uh, or if you have a friend you haven't talked to in a long time in Europe, start opening up that connection again. Like, hey, how's it going, buddy? It's been so long. Just calling to see how you are. And then, like, in a few weeks, when you call up, you're like, I'm so glad we just reconnected. Any chance you're coming to the U.S. anytime soon? Can I have a game sent to you? Board Game Co., the channel where we talk about manipulating your friends. Then, from there, we have Platformer. Platformer, again, I've had that chance to try already. I will have coverage of this one for the campaign, but Platformer is basically going to be Awaken Realms Light uh, next whatever. Very unique game. It's a light game. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's Awaken Realms Light for a reason. It's a light, fun game, but it does capture the feel of a platform game. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to covering that one as well. Then we have Vast Grim, which is like a RPG-adjacent game, so I don't know much about that one at all. We have Wild Ascent coming on... Uh, June 29th, I hope to have coverage of that. Wild Ascent, Levon Rising, I already love the original game. More Wild Ascent is not a bad thing. Am I excited about it? I mean, have you seen the miniatures? Have you? They're pretty cool looking. They're whatever, so we'll see. Uh, then we have Chronicles of Dronegar Age of Darkness. Speaking of more sequels to games I've played, this one coming in July. Chronicles of Dronegar is a game I really enjoyed. Not as much as Wild Descent, but different genres entirely, and I'm very much looking forward to what else they bring to the table in Age of Darkness. Uh, Chronicles of Dronegar was a game that I loved the upgrading. The upgrading of that is so awesome, but it's also a little fiddly just dealing with all the various components. I gave it one a 4 to 5, really enjoyed it, but like wanted to be a little more streamlined. That said, I have people in the comments who are like, no, it's a dungeon crawler what do you expect alex please you're entitled you want your little like on the table go back to core quest alex go back to core quest but i mean they weren't that mean i'm just mean to myself in my own head that was going to be uh chronicles of the age of darkness then we have the divinus i think it's pronounced divinus from lucky duck speaking of lucky duck app related games divinus is going to be another app related legacy light or campaign i can't remember one of those two i think it's i think it's legacy Light. i think one of those two. Let's go with that. Uh, Legs. Is there a difference between Legacy Light and Campaign? What's the difference between Legacy Light and Campaign? I think Legacy Light is Campaign. Isn't it? Maybe? 
I think Legacy Light is a legacy game where you don't destroy components, and a campaign game is a legacy game where you don't destroy components, isn't it? Is there a difference between Legacy Light and Campaign? Let me know. I want to know if I'm missing something here. Either way, I don't. I think it's a I think it's a legacy-ish game where you don't destroy components. Call it what you will. Uh, then we have Lands of Galzer, which is some sort of like storytelling adventure game. Haven't looked into that one that much yet. We have Legend Academy coming to you from from uh, what's the Age of Atlantis people? I can't remember the name. It's gonna bother me. It's going to bother me by the Eldorado Games. Eldorado Games, who bought you Eldorado Quest for Eldorado. They bought you Age of Atlantis. They brought you Windward. And now they're bringing you Legend Academy. That is coming to GameFound as well in July. And then we have Eleven from... I can't do names. From Portal Games. You have Eleven from Portal Games coming to you in September. That is all the GameFound updates. Again, I will have a link to uh, Legion of Games, who covers these all in much more detail, with, you know, pretty looking at the campaign page at the same time on his screen. Fun stuff. That is going to be everything there in terms of the just tons of news this week. Like I said, it's going to be a long, long, long video. I'm going to have a, a sip of coffee now if it's okay with you. So let's talk about the topic of the week. Topic of the week where I printed out a little thingy so I can read it because I want to read it. This is basically going to be, I put out a video over this week about raised shipping prices uh, and because of all the COVID stuff. Now, to be fair, two or three poor people, I mean, I talked about the video, which hopefully from the video it's clear, but two or three people did comment that it's not shipping prices, it's freight prices. You are 100% right, it is freight prices, I just foolishly said shipping prices. My whole video talked about containers and freight and all that, but I titled the shipping prices and it's too late now, the internet is forever including everything I've ever done on video. I'm glad you guys haven't found that one video yet. Anyways, so freight prices. Freight prices is, our freight prices are going up effectively, more so than anyone could have anticipated. They are going up, you know, three to five times as much as anticipated. If you were asked, if you were quoted, you know, hey, your game's going to cost $16,000 to ship to wherever, it might be $80,000 now, which is insanity. That's a lot of extra money. A lot of companies do not have the margins built into how well their Kickstarter performed in order to, to cover that. Some do, some don't, uh, and we're seeing different companies handle different ways. And and I I thought that there were two interesting. Let me just do the. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, yeah, I thought there were two interesting specific points I wanted to cover from the comments in that video. Lots of comments, uh, lots of engagement, mostly supportive, which is great, and those that were resistant, which I completely understand. This is not one of those times where I think you're a bad person. I mean. I'm not telling you all the times I think you're a bad person. I think it. I don't tell you. Sometimes I tell you. But this is not one of those times where I think you're a bad person for not wanting to pay more or not being willing to pay more. I completely understand anyone who doesn't want to pay more or thinks they shouldn't have to pay more. I completely get it. This is more uh, those who are willing to pay more are, in my opinion, going above and beyond. They are, they are treating people with a degree of courtesy that is not required but is beautiful to, to see. There's a difference though. You don't, you're not required to go above and beyond in life. You're certainly not required. And then there are people who reasonably don't even want to have the discussion around, well, don't tell me it's a good deed. It's not a good deed. I paid for something. It's not a good deed to give you more money. And I, I get that to a degree. Let's, let's talk about me first. Let's talk about my own bias. Every time I, I put out a video where I talk about, you know, hey, don't back this game. It'll be cheaper at retail. Inherently in that, conversation is the fact that I'm saying, well, don't support the publisher, save yourself the two bucks and take away 10 from the, the creator. Okay. Inherently in that conversation is that now, first of all, it's not that clear because you're also taking away money from miniature market. So you're always taking away money from someone. There's someone in the supply chain who's losing, right? So it's not, it's not so clear who you're choosing to support. Why is the creator inherently a more worthy person than the people who run miniature market or whatever online store you're buying or local game store that you're buying from? Any of those things are a relevant conversation. But aside from that, my general thesis, so to speak, is that if you're selling a product, you're selling a product. If you want me to buy your product, then give me a reasonable price. If you don't give me a reasonable price, don't ask for, you know, the good deed courtesy going above and beyond of, oh, yeah, of course you're charging more than I can get it elsewhere. But, yeah, I'm happy to pay you because because I like being a good person. So so why why are those two things different? Here's a whole nother why I'm not a hypocrite conversation. So to begin with. Anyone who wants to go above and beyond, anyone who wants to pay extra for a Kickstarter with the idea of supporting the creator, go you. It's a good thing. I don't subscribe to that. That I don't subscribe to the idea that I am I'm required to do that. I believe in doing good deeds. I believe in charity. I believe in all those things. But I don't. I don't feel the need to do that. So you're. I'm glad that you do. I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good deed. I just don't feel that pressure to do that good deed compared to other good deeds. Okay, that's the general aspect there. 
But why? Why do I personally feel the pressure to pay extra towards a company that got this huge shipping expense, but I don't feel the pressure to support the creator? Why are those two things different? And to me, the answer just comes down to expectations, okay? To me, it's just about expectations. It's about the idea that when you price a Kickstarter, you know everything on the table in front of you. You walked into this with your eyes open about what everything looked like and you chose to engage in that. I don't feel the need to jump in and help something that you walked into. If you're saying, but I can't sell my game for less, that's okay. You chose to walk into this industry. You chose to make a game and sell it for that amount because those are the margins that you chose to accept. You walked into a situation. There's a difference between someone who falls into a hole and asks for a hand versus someone who jumps into a hole and asks for a hand. That's the the difference on painting in my own head. Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't overly analyzed this to be very clear. I, I preached the idea of trying to argue both sides. I haven't actually really delved into this one because I wasn't planning on talking about this this video. I plan on talking about two other things on this page. But my, that's my general pre uh, idea. If you jumped into a situation with your eyes fully open, then I don't feel the need to jump in and help out. If you fell into a situation and you couldn't have anticipated it, then I do feel the need. That's my own personal difference there. But again, ultimately, both of them are helping a company. Both of them are helping a creator. Both of them are going above and beyond and doing a courtesy when you are not required to. It's just my, just my distinction as to why I feel differently there versus here. But past that, I want to tackle two different comments that were a common thread. One was a full comment, and one was just a common a common thread that a bunch of people had. The common thread that was asked is, what would be the what would happen in reverse? Let's say these companies had a giant windfall. Let's say shipping prices went down and they saved $80,000 somehow. I mean, some other area because you couldn't save $80,000 on shipping. But let's say they somehow managed to save $80,000 somewhere else. Would they pocket that difference or not? And if they would pocket the difference, why are we being... I mean, if they were to refund us, fine. But if they're going to pocket the difference when it goes their way, why are we being asked to cover when it doesn't? And my answer there is nuanced. My first answer to begin with is you certainly don't have to pay anything. I mean, I mean, well, if they don't, if they don't give you the game, if they say we can't give you the game otherwise, then you are forced between a rock and a hard place, and I understand any resentment or concern you have around that. That said, it, it, let's say they don't. Let's say they, they try to get you to pay, but you don't want to. You don't have to do anything. This is a courtesy. Um, let's be very clear with that. But that said, why do I, what, what is the answer to that? Why is that not like a double standard? And my answer goes back to what I talked about in that video. I think you're already getting the windfall. I think you are already, we, we are all getting the windfall of companies and people wanting to be in this industry and wanting to deal with board games enough that they are dealing with a lower profit margin industry in order to be involved. So we're paying already less than we should be for these board games because people just want to sell the board games and they have to be competitive to the general landscape. So they have already taken on lower profit margins in order to make things work. And so when something does go in their, their way, when they do experience a campaign that blows up, or when they do experience a $20,000 savings on some miniature sculpting or whatever, that is their profit margin that they've already sacrificed in my mind. Of course, they're not going to like write us a blank check back. Like, it makes sense to me. But I, I'm okay with that. I think that they're making so little money that the idea that they might actually make something is nice. Basically, they're dealing with the margins that barely justify the time they are spending here. So if those margins go up to here, keep it. Enjoy. But if the margins go down to there, I want to help out because I don't want you to go under. Now, and, I, and it's again, not because you jumped into the pit. If you jumped into the pit, that is your problem. If you walked into something knowing that's going to be that way, that's your problem. Trust me, I will feel a whole lot less supportive of companies and campaigns that continue this trend for the next, you know, year and a half. Now you know. Now you know what you're walking into. So I'm not interested in paying that extra $10 next time because you walked into it. But companies that are already stuck there, it's a different story. That's my answer. You may not feel that way, and I totally understand that. But I feel that the double standard is okay because of that aspect, because they are already dealing with a tiny amount of margins, and I'm okay with them having a windfall. I just don't want them to go under because they couldn't have foreseen something going their way. And again, you might feel different. The second issue, and this one I'm just going to read off it, I'm not sure I've seen another industry where consumers, this is a comment. I'm not sure I've seen another industry where consumers compensate for losses of producers. In pretty much every other industry, poor planning or unexpected risks can tank company and it usually will be replaced by another. If they don't raise price, let's tackle this one thing at a time. Number one, that's awesome. Board gamers are amazing. Great. Uh, if you're, if you're, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or a, an attack. If you're saying no other industry has a community or the way we do, that's amazing. 
Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate every last one of you. Uh, secondly is, if a company gets tanked and replaced by another, understand you're probably not getting your game along the way. So that's also something you want to consider. If they don't raise prices because they want to ensure more, unit, more units are sold, but then later need to raise prices to deliver the good purchase, it goes against every business principle I've ever learned or lived. That's fair, but again, we just didn't know this. Doing this pandemic, I guess we can say it's an extraordinary situation. That, that's the point. That can prove fatal to an industry that's generally running on lower margins. Yep, that's the point. I'm happy to support the ones that were hit, but I don't accept for Kickstarter campaigns that will launch in the second half of the year. This is the part I want to talk about. Those need to raise prices and need to learn from other campaigns that have unexpectedly struggled. The risk needs to be part of the estimates now. So, basically, um, we're unique, we're special, we're awesome. Also, unique situation, we being the general board game community. Also, it's a unique situation, so, you know, sure. But future campaigns, got to be careful. Here's where the points tie together, because they're interesting. Both those points tie together. How do you propose future campaigns handle this? Because it's interesting, right? Because effectively, here's what goes on. Let's say a company does raise their shipping prices to account for the fact that things will be higher. They say, listen, freight costs right now are 80K, up from 16K. We don't know how high they're going to be. So we're going to assume that they're 160K. And so they raise the prices more than you want. They basically add an extra $20, $30 per game that they wouldn't have otherwise because they the first $15 gets added to cover the current gap. And they add another 15 on top of that to cover the hypothetical gap that they may endure. Wouldn't people want a refund on that? This goes back to the other point. What if the reverse? What if that? What if the shipping prices actually go down? Wouldn't you want your $30 back? So we're in this weird situation where companies now have to choose. Future companies have to choose how to handle it. And we have to think through the fact that there are no good options. Well, there's some better options, but no good options. If they don't charge enough, they'll have to come back to us later. If they worry about the worst-case scenarios and charge three times as much, they're going to sell fewer games, and people are going to want a refund back later, right? Let's go back to the point. So I think really the best situation is to warn people, here's the current gap we're looking at. We'll charge this when it's time to ship in the pledge manager. In other words, your game costs $99, fine. Uh, shipping is going to be uh, $24, fine. And there's going to be a freight charge that we expect to be between zero and $30 that will be charged in the pledge manager at the time of shipping. I think that's the best thing that campaigns have to do. If they don't charge the price, they run the risk of having this cost happen later that they should have known about and foreseen. And if they do charge the price and those costs don't happen, people will want their money back and we're back to the original comment. And so it's an interesting thing. And I hope companies do this. I hope companies really do have a, sh a freight cost that was warned about that will be charged at the time of shipping depending on the current freight cost situation. I think that's the only way to handle it. But that is enough. That is basically the overview. I want to talk about the shipping price situation again, just because I thought those were interesting comments to address. And yeah, I want to address them. Which brings us, after way too long, the week in review. Oh, who? Cool. Got another email from Assassin's Creed people. Hey, okay, cool. Week in review. This week has been an interesting week in the sense that I have played a lot of games. Like, really, I've played a lot of games, but not a lot of different games. I've played incredibly few different games. Okay? So, I have. <laughs> You'll see in a second. Okay, so we have more Cthulhu Death May Die. Rena and I are continuing to go through the campaign over there. Uh, then on Saturday, on Saturday, I set up Assassin's Creed. I have no friends on Saturday. I mean, I have no friends anytime, but the ones who usually like to play games with me, uh, they came by and they, didn't, they did not come by. So I had Assassin's Creed set up the whole Saturday. And I played one or two games with my wife and kids. And then I played um, Assassin's Creed all day long downstairs in the basement for like eight hours. So I have like six games of Assassin's seven games of Assassin's Creed on Saturday. That was fun. I really enjoyed that. We'll talk about more. I have Arch Ravels, which I played with my wife. That was enjoyable. We'll have a review at some point. And then on Sunday, we have more Assassin's Creed, more Assassin's Creed. On Monday, we have uh, Alhambra Roll and Write, which I started going through. So in general, when I show those lists of games every week, I usually get about half of them. The other half don't happen. We'll cover we'll cover those. So I have Alhambra Roll and Write. That's one of the three Roll and Writes I talked about. More Assassin's Creed. Then on Tuesday... More Assassin's Creed, more Assassin's Creed, and Escape Roll and Write. That's number two. And then on Wednesday, more Assassin's Creed. And then, uh, what's it called? Um, what's the last one? I didn't log it yet. But the last one is it's Escape, Alhambra, and uh, Copenhagen. Copenhagen Roll and Write. And then on Thursday, well, today's Thursday, so I don't know exactly what's happening. I do know I'll have a play of Oros later today. So basically, this week was like a low... I only played like five or six unique games this week. Uh, six, six unique games this week. But I have a ton of Assassin's Creed and then a whole bunch of other games. So that was going to be uh, this week in terms of the games I played. Which brings us to the Week in Review part. Way too long into the video. I warned you it was going to be a long one. But either way. So, Week in Review. 
Weekend review is as follows. Saturday. Saturday, I reviewed Buru and Chronicles of Jonagar. Buru really surprised me. Uh, basically, I, I was debating heavily between... Not really surprised me. Surprised me a little bit. I was debating heavily between a 3 out of 5 and a 4 out of 5. But I really... I, one of the lines for me between a 3 and a 4. One of the lines that I usually have is a 3 more often than not. Whether I choose to keep it or not. If you took it away from me, I don't think I'd go through the trouble of getting it back. That's often the line for me. Buru is one that I, I really thought that I kind of wanted it. I didn't want it to leave. I wanted to continue playing it more. And so I did end up backing it, by the way. We'll talk more about that uh, reluctantly because it's expensive. It is expensive. But if it was, if it was less than that, it wouldn't have been a question. But yeah, so Boo, I ended up giving it a four. It's one, I don't know if I'll stay in my collection long term. I don't know. It, it is a little bit on the lighter side. It's a little bit more streamlined. And again, I got this one mid-campaign. So I only had like three plays of it before the review. I usually try for more. I don't always get more. Uh, my general rule for reviews is I disclaim if I played it once, Anything more than that, I'll talk about it if it's relevant, but I won't make a point of talking about it. But yeah, Boo, I got three plays in. It, I enjoyed it. I'm not confident of it long term. We will see, but time will tell. Uh, then Chronicles of Jonagar unboxing. I haven't played that yet. Probably should be playing that this week because I have till, what is it again? July sometime? Mid-July? I have time. I have time, he says, as he looks at Assassin's Creed. Want to jump back into that. Uh, then we have, uh, what's it called? Saturday. That was uh, Saturday. Then we have Sunday. Sunday was going to be what I did and didn't back together with Rina. Lots of fun games, Marvel United, Wonderful Kingdom, a bunch of games that she uh, made me back because because we got a few more games there that way. So we'll see, including a uh, Dice Theme Park and and uh, uh, Dawn Dawn whatever something uh, something Dawn. I can't remember the name of it. Either way, Don Falcone. Either way, so yeah, a bunch of games there, Plattrix as well. Monday was to back or not to back. Light week this week, a few updates of games I'm interested in, but in terms of the non-update section for new games, I was primarily interested in Overstocked and, uh, uh, what's it called, Deliverance. I don't know if I'm backing either of those, we'll see. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold back from backing as much as possible from anything that I'm not like 100% certain of, because I back too many games and... I play a lot of games, but I, I need to stop backing games I'm not 100% certain of, he says after admitting he backed Baru. Then, uh, moving on to Tuesday. Tuesday was going to be Theurgy, uh, three or three games, basically. We had Theurgy, a review for Theurgy, which has a pledge manager open until the 30th. That one's a really solid game. A little different. It's a, it's a hybrid area control dudes in a map situation. A uh, solid game. I, I it's, it's very, yeah, solid game. I have some critiques, some complaints. I gave it a four to five. Really want to add it to my collection. It's one of those that I don't know as much uh, long term. You know, will it hold up long term after 20 plays? Don't know. But for right now, I do want to add it to my collection. Uh, then we have Cat Lady, a lighter game that I've been playing with my wife and with, with my kids and enjoying it. And it's lots of fun uh, from AEG. Solid game. Uh, that one I gave, I think I gave it a three to five. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I gave it a four to five. I don't remember. I have to double check what I do. It's always tricky with these lighter games, the category, the way I rate them. I, I need to think through how I handle uh, more family-focused or kids games in terms of the general rating system. But either way, I really enjoyed it. I can tell you that much. And then we had an unbox, not unboxing, we had a playthrough for, for Cthulhu Left May Die with Rina. This is starting the playthrough series that we're having. Uh, basically, I hope to have the second episode is likely going up this Monday, a uh, Patreon exclusive though for that one. Basically, the first one was the general channel, but following that is going to be Patreon exclusive, $2 tier or above. There's more Patreon exclusive videos at the $5 tier above, but uh, the playthrough should be $2 tier or above. And then um, we'll see when the next one goes up. We're ready to play the next one. We'll see when it actually goes up past that. And then from there, we had on Wednesday, that was Tuesday. Wednesday was the shipping cost video that we just talked about a second ago. So Lots of engagement, lots of whatever. Basically, the goal is awareness. I, I just want people to be to understand the current state of the world, and lots of updates are coming out left, right, and center. Some of them are eating the cost, some of them are not. Uh, however, it's being handled. I'm just, I'm just happy that there's more awareness around this issue, and lots of people are putting out updates that they were scared to put out up before because more people are talking about it, which is always helpful. Then we have Thursday. Thursday is going to be a video that was the best games of 2021 so far. Uh, basically, these are the seven games I gave a five out of five to in 2021. Now, for context here, so I took, I took, took a look at my stats, which I probably should have done for the video, but I took a look at my stats for 2021. I have played 133 unique games so far, okay, 133 unique new games, basically not unique, new games, 133 new to me games in 2021, um, I played more than 133 unique games, but 133 new to me games in 2021, from those 133, I have rated, set, well, I've officially rated seven of them a five, and I think three more of them are getting a five, I just need to, I either haven't done the review or need to play them more, but we'll go through that, and from those, uh, from those, that effectively is 7% of the games I've played. Now, not all games that I play get a review. Generally, the higher I like a game, the more likely I am to review it, which will bias my reviews to a degree. But in terms of total whatever, that's 7% of the games I have played got a 5 out of 5. Uh, factor that in, because I've seen comments both ways. I've seen people who are like, no, a 5 out of 5 should be the best ever game. And I'm like, go jump in a lake. It's my system. I'll do what I want with it. But effectively, to me, a 5 out of 5 is an amazing game. 
I don't care if I have complaints. I'll have complaints about every single game. If you want a perfect game, it's never going to be a 5 out of 5. But uh, we'll talk about that. And so in that video, I went through the 7. I went through the 7 I talked about. And then the 3 more, the 3 more that I am expecting, let's go through them, is uh, Viticulture. Expect a 5 out of 5 for that when I do the review. Love it. I just haven't done a review for it. I've had a whole bunch of plays of it in 2021. Just I haven't prioritized a review of it because I do prioritize newer stuff because it does get more eyeballs. But I do want Viticulture to get a review shortly. Then Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed, I'm like 12 plays into it, and I, I mean, V Commandos, I gave a 4 to 5. Assassin's Creed is absolutely getting a 5 to 5. I've been playing this game for a lot, a lot this past week. I'm still playing it, still going through it, still enjoying it, but we'll see how that goes. So that one's going to be getting a 5 out of 5 when I eventually review that one. And then, by the way, I have a playthrough of that coming up today. And then we have the last one, the one I'm not certain about because I do need more plays, is I'm 99% sure Lords of Hellas is getting a 5 out of 5. For context, I only have one play of Lords of Hellas under my belt, so I'm not rating it yet. That said, I also have one play under my belt and then looked at the game group and was like, this might beat Blood Rage for me. Like, I need more plays, I need more time, this might beat Blood Rage. It's, I really enjoy the multifaceted victory approach that Lords of Hellas gives. So we'll see how it goes. I do not know for sure, but I really, really enjoy Lords of Hellas. We'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. But those are going to be the 10 games that are either 5 out of 5 or likely getting a 5 out of 5. Uh, and what's interesting about them is they are each best in class in their different ways. So I cover this in that Thursday video. But just go over it very quickly. We have Wild Descent, which is going to be the best general powers and abilities upgrading game. We have uh, Mosaic, which is going to be the best tableau builder. We have, I need to remember the ones I did. We have Primal, which is the best boss battler. We have Wild Descent. We have uh, Fall of Mountain King, which is the best area control. We have Lords of Hellas, which is the best dudes on a map. Overlap in those, but they are different. Fall of Mountain King is very much area control, minimal dudes in a map fighting. Uh, the dudes in map fighting is only really with the trolls, with the enemies, but past that, so it's primarily an area control game. Uh, feels more like El Grande than, you know, dudes in the map. Uh, the Lords of Hell will be best dudes in a map. Viticulture will be the best worker placement. Uh, Assassin's Creed will be the best campaign legacy game. Why, uh, let's see, what else is there? What else? Is there? Aquatica is the best short game. It does, it, does a, it is a tableau builder like Mosaic, but it's the best short game. And then I don't remember what else I gave a 5 out of 5 to. He says, Destinies was the best uh, story game, the best narrative game. And then there's one more game. Either way, I covered that other game in the video, so you can watch that. But they're all best in class in their own unique way, which I find fascinating. There's like no, o there's some overlap, some degrees. Like again, Aquatica and Mosaic are both tableau builders, but I think Mosaic is a better tableau builder, but Aquatica is a shorter game. It's the best short game. So factor all those into how you want, but all of them are pretty awesome in different ways. And with that, with that, moving on to Friday. Friday was 10 games with a good insert. So we covered that one. Basically, I did a video with uh, uh, Shelf Side and, uh, not Shelf Side, uh, Side Stories, Side Stories, Shelf Side's different channel. I did a video with Side Stories, which the 10 games that we would be more likely to play with a good insert. And we talked about uh, our games that we think would hit the table more often with a good insert, some of which already have a good insert and some of which I need to get a good insert for. And then also later on Friday, I have to double check. I'm not certain about this, I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure later on Friday there will be a, or there was, there will be for me, there was for you, a Steam Watchers unboxing. So we'll get at that. Need to play that. In fact, I want to do a video at some point in the next few weeks. Not few weeks. I need, at some point in the future, I want to do a video on my favorite dudes of the map games. I have a lot of them. I really need to go over them. Uh, the best of the best in that sense. And then finally today, today, what do we have coming up today? Today we have two things. We have a review for King of 12 coming up at, well, King of 12 going up at 12 Eastern Standard Time. And then at 2 p.m. we have an Assassin's Creed solo playthrough, Mission 1.1. No real spoilers past the tower. I'll explain it in the video. But the tower, when you reveal the tower and you do that, you know, synchronizing thingy, it does show some well, treasure chests on the map. So that part will be spoiler, but I skipped all story and I made sure I chose a mission that doesn't have any narrative twists. Lots of campaigns, lots of the missions, not lots. Some of the missions have different narrative twists that will be uncovered. This one doesn't really. You'll find out the location of a treasure chest. That's basically, that's basically it. It's not a big deal, but that's going to be Assassin's Creed playthrough. And that is basically the week. Coming up next week, I hope to have a pledge manager, upcoming pledge manager video. We will see. I'm not certain exactly yet, but I hope to have that. Maybe I'll do that Monday. Maybe I'll do the pledge manager video on Monday because I don't think I'll have a two back or not to back on Monday. We'll see. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, so we might do that for Monday. We, we'll take a look. I, I'll, I'm still figuring out the schedule for next week. But either way, we'll see how it goes. And then finally, games on the table. See how I didn't forget this time? I was all ready for it. 
Games on the table. What do we have? We have Hadrian's Wall, which I've been hearing so many good things about. Really want to get this one to the table. I need to read the rules first, so we'll see if I actually do. We have Distilled, which is an upcoming Kickstarter. I've already played this one, but I do want to get it to the table. This will be my first physical play. I've played it on TTS until now. I want to play this one physically and get it to the table. Uh, we have Paleo. Paleo is one that I've been wanting to play either either way, but basically uh, Quackalope and Jeremy Howard put out a video this week. I'll throw a link down below. Uh, their top 10 games. By the way, speaking of which, I didn't copy them at all. Here's Here's the deal with this, okay? Quackalo put out a shipping cost video, and then later that week, I put out a shipping cost video. Then Quackalo put out a Best Games of 2021 video, and later that week, I put out a Best Games of 2021 video. This was not coordinated. Well, I mean, the shipping cost one sort of was, in the sense that I was planning on doing a video, and then I found out he was planning on doing a video, and I was like, fine, you go first, I'll do mine later, it's all good. And then the Best Games of 2021, I had no clue what was coming until it popped up, and I was I had already filmed mine and set it scheduled, so we, we're not copying each other. We just, we just do the same things. Uh, yeah, but Paleo. In that video, they mentioned Paleo. Not, they hadn't actually played it, but they talked about it. And I was like, you know what? I've been wanting to play my copy of Paleo, so I'm pulling it off the shelf. I hope to play this this week. And then finally, we have Isis Vanguard, a game that I very much planned on playing last week. And then I set up Assassin's Creed. I knew I had that Saturday all to myself. And I was like, I'm going to play Assassin's Creed, and I'm going to play Isis Vanguard. And then I just kept playing Assassin's Creed. No disrespect to Isis Vanguard. I just really like Assassin's Creed, and... uh I figured I'll use the momentum and keep playing, but we'll see. Hopefully this week I get to play ISS Vanguard. Until next time, long video. Thanks so much for sticking around. I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you've enjoyed this week in review. Lots of fun things coming up. It's it's just this there's too many games. There's too many games in a good way. We live in a, a fun, well, I mean, I guess shipping costs might change all that. So let's end this video on a dark note and say no more games. Enjoy the ones you have. Have a good week, and as always, have a good one.